with me? Unfortunately, we might be 2021, but we still don't have all the answers. <laughs> That didn't light your fire, your wood's wet. <laughs> okay, well, we're so glad to have everyone here this morning. 
Magic man. <laughs> it's working now. Before I say something inappropriate. All righty. Well, we're here. We're glad to have you on this rainy, ugly day. However, there's no snow and it is decently warm. So we're glad to have you. <clears throat> uh, if you look at your bulletin, those of you who are here and have a bulletin, you want to check the prayer concerns. And uh, our birthdays today, or our birthdays we're going to announce today, is Floyd Fearnow. Now, wait a minute, it says the 29th. She's trying to fool me. Okay, well, he only gets to have a birthday every four years. He's young. <laughs> All righty. And Lenora, our wonderful Lenora, is March 1. So be sure, if you can, to send her a card, give her a call, or at least make sure you pray for her. Anniversaries are on the 3rd of March, Don and Marty Priest, and they certainly need our prayers and would love to have a card, I'm sure. And March the 5th are Mike and Janet Shipley, 56 years, good for them. Make sure you sign the greeting cards out in the narthex, and remember that during Lent, Pastor Oscar is doing a seven-minute devotion every day at 12 noon. Uh, the 12 noon is in English, and if you're interested in Spanish, it's going to come on at 12.15. So we hope that you will check in with that on Facebook. Uh, Acacia's having their Art in Bloom, a virtual one. And uh, don't forget, if you have not signed up for the 24-hour clock to pray, please do it. It's in the narthex on the right side, and there's lots of empty places, so... Uh, it's not hard to do, and uh, doesn't cost you a penny, except a little bit of your time. So, <clears throat> let's see. Lenten season, a, a service of praise and adoration, nearer to the heart of God, March the 2nd, on Facebook, and it's live, uh, where the bishop is doing these, I believe. Uh... It will include a message of encouragement from Bishop Trimble and a special time of prayer. <clears throat> On the calendar, Tuesday, March the 2nd, the Administrative Board Trustee meeting is at 6.30. And uh, on Thursday, it's at 7 here. And then please try to plan to stay after that 7 o'clock meeting so that we can make our decision about what we're going to do with the roof. There's quite a nice little bonus in it. If we have made our uh, commitment and signed the form by March the 15th. So if we're to get that accomplished, we're going to have to stay and uh, hash it out Thursday night so that we can start the ball rolling how we're gonna pay for this. So, <clears throat> Peace be with you. So please share the peace of Christ. Morning, everyone.
Please stand as you're able to join in the call to worship. This morning it's adapted from Matthew 5, 13 through 16. It was a dull, tasteless thing. It was a dark, meaningless thing. Then he came to give flavor and light to this earth, to this world. We are the salt of the earth and light of the world. Our hymn today is page 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You. Now, when you look out on these people's faces, you should be looking happy. I know we can't see much, but yes, but you can tell whether you're smiling under that or not. And how you sing makes a big difference. This is what God wants. He wants us to be happy, joyful people. here. <laughs> she has been going through a very difficult time dealing with a lot of pain and, uh, as you know, uh, struggling with, with after the surgery, another surgery, and then uh, she fell, right? So let us pray for her. And uh, if you feel that we need to pray for you, just raise your hand and I, I want to see you. you. You have some pain, physical pain. We believe in the power of prayer. Absolutely. We believe that we, we come together and pray, the Lord will hear us. That's what the Bible says. Amen? So we're coming together to pray for our sister this morning. So close your eyes, open your heart, and ask the Lord as if it's you, the one who is in pain. See what I mean? So ask the Lord 
as if it's you that are asking for that prayer. So let us pray. Father, we thank you today because you are here with us as you promised. We are certain of things that we don't see because we have faith that you are here with us, walking with us through these days. You are with us, Lord, always as you promise. And we believe, Lord, that you are continuing uh, helping us, especially with those things that sometimes are difficult for us to, to face, like pain. So this morning we're coming together as one. And we come, Lord, we come with a certainty that your hand will touch our sister's body and she will feel better. Because we believe that you have the power and you have the willingness to heal us. So right now, Lord, touch exactly the place where she feels the pain. Give her peace in her heart and certainty in her spirit that you will heal her, that you will walk with her all the way. Give her rest, Lord, and if she is struggling uh, with her faith, give her the strength that she needs to see, Lord, what <coughs> we cannot see with these eyes, but we can see with the eyes of faith. So we believe, Lord, in the power of healing through you when we ask you, Lord, in prayer, and we recognize, Lord, that it is you, not us, but you who receive glory. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody say. Amen. Amen. God bless. Let us pray together with this prayer that we have here. Merciful God, you, you call, call us to be salt of the earth and light of the world. world. We, we confess, confess that our witness, witness is often bland, bland and gloomy. Forgive, Forgive us when we fail to be an influence for good and when we condone or do what is wrong in your sight. Help us to flavor the earth with righteousness and to reflect the light of your love in a dark world. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading today is from Leviticus 2.13. Season all your grain offerings with salt. Do not leave the salt of the covenant of your God out of your grain offerings. Add salt to all your offerings. These are holy words and holy wisdom. Be to God. And the New Testament reading is from Matthew 5.13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. This is the gospel of the risen Christ. Sing with us. You love, O oh Lord.
just as close like the ocean tide. I will live my passage here that you know very well. And uh, we have been, I have been preaching this passage before, but it is always something new. And always something new because of the circumstances that you're going through. Uh, push, push you to think in a different way push you to see things that you don't see usually. Um, so open your eyes to this passage and see that uh, it's a lot, a lot of things to learn from, from this passage. So today we are going to reflect only on the salt, not the light, but the salt. So <clears throat> this is the, the composition of salt, okay? Something that we use every day, right? Sometimes more than we should, <laughs> but it's there. Probably salt and pepper <laughs> are always on the table or close by, right? More than any other thing, salt and pepper. Uh, well, <clears throat> Jesus used this to teach us something. And um, we need to start thinking from Jesus' perspective instead of our perspective to get the idea. For example, when Jesus said, you are the light of the world, obviously we have laser today, you know. It's a different kind of world. At Jesus' time, it was probably a lamp used on oil and put, you know, that's how they illuminate. And obviously the sun during the day that was his uh, context. For us, it's different. So the same thing with this, even though with salt basically is the same for all these centuries, okay? Um, there are different kinds of salt, many different kinds of salt. Uh, my wife is using one that is pink. I don't know, you can see it here, probably this one. 
And it's not that salty as the other one. So when I prepare food and I'm using that salt, I need to think that it's not as salty as the white one. So, but there are many different kinds of salt, from the Himalaya, from Hawaii, I don't know, from Persian blue salt, Hawaiian, uh, Himalayan, regular, even Kokomo style. No. Different kinds of salt. So, <clears throat> Salt, as you know, was very important, so important at that time that we even have war specifically just because of the salt. That was the importance of salt, okay? Um, there is a couple of, um, before that one, we, we have a, a, a two cases that I want to just to, to give you uh, today, you, you can have an idea. There was a war in 1540, and it was the result of an insurrection by the city of Perugia against the Papal States. This is in, obviously, Europe. During the pontificate of Alessandro Farnese, the principal result was the city of Peruvia's definitive su subordination to Papal control. The Peruvia had been a free commune until 1370, when it was the uh, year incorporated to papal states. The Peruvian, Perugian elite continued to enjoy a sort of semi-autonomy, including several privileges like trial by a local, no papal appointed, judge, and freedom from paying any taxes on salt. Then an important product for preserving food, as you know. Beginning in the late 15th century, successive pop attempted to reign in Perugian uh, autonomy despite resistance by the Perugians. So this came to a head after a disastrous harvest in 1529, which dropped up prices, and then they had this war, basically, on that. Now, the other one, <clears throat> And I didn't know this. Actually, it was a surprise for me because I like history, but I didn't know about this one, that it happened in the States. Do you know? Did we have a fight about salt in the United States? Well, let me tell you. This is the San Elisario Salt War, also known as the Salinero Revolt, or the El Paso Salt War. was an extended and complex uh, Range war in the mid 19th century that revolved around the ownership and control of immense, immense salt lakes at the base of the Guadalupe Mountains. This is West Texas, border with Mexico, that area, close to New Mexico. Okay, you have an idea where is that? Well, we have a problem there and. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the problem was so bad to control that, that we have even the African-American 9th Cavalry going there. We have uh, mercenaries from New Mexico, and they caused hundreds of Tejanos, or Texans, to flee to Mexico, some of them permanently in permanent exile. So the right of individuals to own the Salt Lakes which had previously been held as a community, as said, was established by force of arms. And this happened here in the state. I didn't know that, do you? We have a war about, about salt in the state. This is the, 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 other, the other picture of the, of the, the Roca Paulina, <clears throat> the fortress constructed as a result of the salt war. And this is the place that I'm telling you uh, in West Texas, okay? So, salt was important, more important than you can imagine today. Even the word salary is coming from salt, because it was the portion that they paid to the soldier. Imagine that. So it was so important that we're still using it today. When you receive your salary, is basically the portion of salt. Obviously, now, in a different, the different understanding. But that was the, the origins. So, I found several 
or many uses of salt, but I picked these four for you, and we will go through this because in some way, Jesus is telling us something when he said, you are the salt of the earth. Amen? He's not saying, I am the salt. He say, actually, I am the light, remember? I am the light of this world, and whoever follows me will always have light to walk. He said many other, seven times, I am this, I am that. He never say, actually, I am the salt. He say, you are the salt. We are the salt. So it's very interesting here. Amen? Very interesting. Because in Jesus' point of view, that's how he sees you and how he sees me and how he sees us as a salt. So it's very important to understand his point of view, to understand his message. Amen? So the first thing that salt will do uh, when, you, when you have an open wound is that it's very painful. And let me, let me explain to you because this is, for me, this is very real. When I was a kid, in Mexico, in this little island, we, we uh, go really early in the morning. I'm talking about four or five in the morning. Uh, usually, for me, it was on a, probably a Saturday because that was the day that I could go to fish with my brothers and sisters, uh, my brothers and uncles, and uh, uh, to, to catch oysters. So for oysters, uh, you need to basically use some these artifacts that you can, you can uh, draw these, these um, oysters from the bottom, and then you need to clean them inside the boat, okay? So for me as a kid, that was my job, to clean them. But when you clean oysters, you, you get a lot of cuts, a lot. That's part of your business. Even though you use a, a glove, you will get cut. Why? Because oysters are very, very sharp. So when you are cleaning them, you will have several cuts. So one of the things I, re I remember is the pain when the salty water of the river came to my hands. It was very painful. But my brother told me, hey, it's painful, but it's good for you. And I said, it's not good for me. At that time when I was a kid, it's really painful. It's painful, but he said, but that's good. Later I understood that, that the other part. But yes, salt is painful to an open wood. Now, is that what Jesus had in his mind when he said, you are, the earth, you are the salt of the earth? Is he is trying to tell us that we need to be like salt in an open wound? Sometimes. Brothers and sisters, sometimes is exactly what Jesus is calling us to do. We need to call things in this world by the name. And we need to be the solution. Not only to pray for the solution, but be the solution. Be the medicine. And sometimes this can cause pain. Especially when people don't want to, uh, to hear things. The prophets were sent by God to tell the people of Israel about the different situations in, his, in their life, social, especially social life. Uh, they came to worship the Lord, and they have workers, and they didn't pay correctly to the workers. The Lord said, hey, I don't want you here praising God, and then you are paying low wages to your workers. I don't want you here if you are a business guy and you are selling. Instead of putting 1,000 milligrams, you put 800 milligrams and you are selling that as a kilogram. I don't want you here praising God and doing that. I just want you here if you can help the widow when you harvest and you are not leaving anything there for them. When you harvest, that's what the Bible says, you need to leave something behind for those who are coming, like the widow, like the orphan, like the foreigner in your land. Clearly specify that, the Lord. And he says, I don't want you here worshiping if you are doing that. 
because this is how we understand and how God wanted us to behave is not only to come here and worship the Lord. It's that we can worship the Lord there with our actions. Can we say amen to that? How we behave, how we do this and that. Because we are the salt of this earth. So we need to be there. We need to be the cure, the medicine for the people. Amen? Now, many, if not all, of the uh, prophets were killed because the people of Israel didn't want to hear that. Today, we talk about, when we say prophets and prophecy, people think that it's about the future. Uh -uh. It's not about the future. It's about the present. Check that in the Bible. Yes, there are passages that talk about the future, but that's a little part of the whole message. The main message is about how you behave today. To be a prophet is the, to be the voice of God for the people. Obviously, some people didn't like that. They took it very personal with the, with the messenger, and they killed the messenger, thinking that they killed the message. But it's impossible. So we need to be the messenger, the salt. Sometimes it's not easy. Can we say amen to that? Now, <clears throat> salt, that's what I'm saying, is an antiseptic. It's an antiseptic. I remember that uh, after I had different cuts, put my hands in this salty water, and my hands start healing. And, um, and I remember my, my brother when he said that. It's painful, but then you can heal. Uh, and, and probably this is a message for us first. When you come closer to God, sometimes it can be painful to accept our reality. Amen? But once the Lord starts working with us, you will see the difference. When I was a kid, um, I remember once when I, a thorn, is that how you say a thorn, came to my hand. And it was really bad. It was really inside. And uh, it was very painful. And my mother said, hey, come, I will, you know, moms, in, I don't know here, but moms in Mexico, they, they are the doctors for us, okay? They will cure you. They will do the thing. And I say, hey, come, I will fix you. And they say, no, don't touch it. And, 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 and I was so afraid because when she touched it, it was painful. And again, you know, she took that um, aguja, how you say that? The needle. And it was painful, but it took that. So it's exactly what, what happens when we come with God. You, 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 are, you are in pain, probably in your spirit, your mind or even in the body. But when coming, when you come to God, that pain will disappear. You open your heart to the Lord. Amen? He is our doctor that way. The next thing is that um, salt, what? Do you think that is real? Why is that? You eat salty things and then you want water. Well, there is something that happening in your brain with the salt that requires uh, to, be, to, to drink water to compensate that uh, difference in, in, the, in, uh, in, in, the, in the body. So if it's too much salt, so the body is claiming water to compensate that. That's really interesting. That's a way to, to um, um, in some way, to... to uh, find the equilibrium that you need. Okay? So I'm thinking, is that what Jesus tried to tell us? You are salt. So make the people thirsty for God. Amen? So our, our, our labor, our work as Christians should be that we should invite people give whatever is we have in our hearts to that person and initiate something in the mind and the soul of that person so that person can look for God because we don't have all the answers. And when we call somebody to come closer, it's not come closer to me, but come closer to God. Amen? 
So I am, in some way, just like the salt, make, making people thirsty for God. When we do that, uh, we are, in my opinion, accomplishing what Jesus tried to do. You are the salt of the earth. The last one is what we know, right? Salt is seasoning. Um, now, this is probably how we know it, basically, and how we use it till today, right? Sometimes we use it more than we should, and we need to cut in salt. So the doctors say, hey, no more salt, no more salt, because we, we, have a, we are using it more than we should. Um, I don't know if you understand this part, but um, we have a relationship with salt that is, is a, a life and death relationship. If you don't eat salt, uh, uh, actually you need it. You need some salt. But if you eat too much, that's bad for you. So you need to kind of have the, the, the right uh, portion of salt that you should. Some of, of the products that you consume already have salt in them. So you don't need to put more. But we, need, we have the feeling that we need to do that. Now, is that what this world needs? So as salt, you and I should give flavor to this world. Because without God, this world doesn't have flavor. And people start looking here and there and there and there and there, looking for God here and there. And, 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 you, and they cannot find God. They cannot find happiness without God. And they continue looking and, 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 and you say, and you, you know already that there are people there experimenting with this and that, that they, will ne they are not happy. Why? Because they don't have God in their life. God is like that piece in the puzzle that uh, without that piece, you cannot complete the puzzle. And you try to put all those pieces there and none of them will match because that part, is only designed for God in your life. So that's the reason why people need that. And they try to do it through drugs and alcohol or money or this and that. And they can have probably some happiness for a moment, but no real happiness, you know, no real hope and joy. So they need God. And we are the ones that we should provide that to the, to, the, to the world. Now, it's not easy, and let me tell you this, it's not easy sometimes to be different, especially for young kids in the school. I see some young kids today. It's not easy because most of the time the people around them are expecting something from them, and it's, the pressure is really strong. The pressure that you have, we have in the 60s or 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, or even 90s, is nothing to compare with the, what they are living today, okay? Don't think, oh, when I was a kid. No, that's a completely different thing. It's too much sometimes. But it's the same formula. You need God. You need to be okay with yourself. Amen? You need to be always thinking about God, how to please God, not how to please your friends. And when you do that, you will be happy. Amen? Now, to finish, how can I be a salt that is a, that what the people need well? When we come closer to God, we receive from God what the people need. But we need to be sensitive and open, always open to the other people's needs, not to what I want to say. Check this. When you try to present the message to, to somebody, don't have already the message with you. You need to listen first to the need, to what that person is looking for, to what that person is, is, is the, the question that that person has, and 
from that, you need to answer to that person. There are people who think that they know already what you need. Even Jesus, when you see Jesus presenting the message, he never used the same message for all the people. He used the message according to the need of that person. To Nicodemus, remember he said, you need to be born again. But if you continue reading the Bible in John, you will see that Jesus said to the Samaritan lady in the next chapter, chapter 4, he said, what? If you drink of the water that I have, you will never be thirsty again. Remember that? And then, if you continue reading, he had an encounter with a rich young guy. And that rich young guy uh, says, I, I, I want to follow you, Lord. And he said, there is something, one thing, the commandments, remember? And he said, I, I, I have been doing that from the, you know, since I, I was a kid, I have been doing that. And he was a really excellent young guy. But Jesus saw something even deeper. And he said, one thing, one more thing, you need to sell all you have, give that to the poor people, and then you will follow me. Why Jesus said that to him and not to Nicodemus or the, or the Samaritan lady? Because that was exactly what he needed to do. See what I'm trying to say here? Jesus' message is according to Jeb for Jeb. It's according to, you know, the message for, for my brother Jerry is exactly what Jerry needs. Know what I think I need, he needs. So we cannot be the same exactly for everybody. So when we come and we are the salt of the earth, it's not the same for everybody. We need to listen and be prepared to present the message according to what they need. When we do that, we are the salt. Amen? So be open, be flexible. And be ready, I will say. The salt doesn't make sense in the salt shaker, right? This is the last one. What is that? This is how we use it even in my town till today. We, we prepare fish, for example. And, and in some places, there are no refrigerators. There is no electricity in some areas really far away from, from uh, our communities. Um, so the only way for the fishermen to, to preserve the fish is using salt. And that's how they, they do it. We know that that's the way to, to preserve other things, you know, ham. Uh, that's how we, we have that delicious uh, uh, food, right? So we are here to preserve this world of putrefaction. Wow. In that, and that was exactly what Jesus had in his mind when he said, hey, Jerry, you are the salt. Hey, brother, you are the salt. Hey, you are the salt. 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 That's exactly what he had in mind. Because otherwise this world will suffer degradation. And when we don't do our job, that's exactly what happens. So we are here, Lord, I say every morning, to do what today? Love people. Embrace people. Share that with uh, those who are in need. Be the light and the salt. Every day. Because if we, when we don't do that, uh, there is no way to protect this world. So, we are here to give flavor, to heal, and to preserve. Amen? <clears throat> this is a photograph of a, of a lake in uh, Bolivia. It's a lake of salt. It was a lake before. When the lake disappeared, this is what it was left. It seems like a, a kind of 
uh, interplanetary picture from, or picture from another planet, right? But no, it's, it's Earth. Actually, I have a friend from Bolivia, a, a member of a church in, in New Orleans, that she had been there, and she showed me some pictures. And, and she said, it's an amazing place. You are there, and this is completely flat, and then you see all this, uh, but it's salt. There is just salt so all around you, and it's beautiful. Well, we are the salt, brothers and sisters. So believe that the Lord is with you always to do your mission every day. Be the salt. Wherever you are in the school, you are in the office, you are in your job, in wherever you are, you are the salt. Amen? That's exactly what we are. Right now, here, this is the salt shaker. But when we go out, that's how we work. There, not here, there. How? Preserving. See? Giving flavor. Giving the best that we have to preserve that. To give flavor, to give sense to this world. That's how uh, we should be always uh, functioning every day. Jesus Christ died for us. And he died thinking that we will be the salt. He believed in that. So, brothers and sisters, don't wait any longer to be the salt. Don't waste a day any longer. Be the salt that this world needs. Because Jesus is expecting that from us. This, this world is decaying rapidly and doesn't have flavor. So give flavor and stop the putrefaction in this world. Amen? Amen. Let us pray together. Actually, we have a song. Stand up with me, please. Five, uh, 354 in your hymn book. 354. And surrender to Jesus.
for us and because you trust in us to be the soul of this world give us the opportunity Lord to give flavor and preserve this world in your name and for your glory and we pray together that prayer that you gave us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Let us prepare our offering. You may be seated. And uh, we will... Um, do that at the end, as you know, you can uh, put your uh, envelopes in the, somebody will be in the back, or you can use the online system we have, Give Plus, uh, download that application in your cell phone, and you can uh, do it uh, online. Remember, <clears throat> uh, they will ask you for the zip code, and then you can pick our church from that. Let us pray for our offerings. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity you are giving us to be part of this ministry with our offerings. Bless every single source of income. Bless our brothers and sisters with a healthy economy. And give us the opportunity, Lord, to participate every day in your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, you're welcome to stand up. You, you're willing and able to, to sing with us. I will come upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord, who is worth to be praised. So shall I be from my enemy, I will call on the Lord. The Lord liveth and 
us to be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord live us and bless us be the rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. I will call upon the Lord, the Lord near us, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord near us, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be I think we are winning the, the fight against this virus. That's my feeling. I was checking numbers around the world, and I think we are doing much better. And uh, little by little, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Amen? Amen? But we need to stick together. Amen? We need to continue working together, especially uh, doing what we need to do to reduce that to nothing. Amen? We can do it. So let us pray. And uh, uh, this week, uh, especially, I will say this week, that we're in the middle of the season of Lent. Uh, look for our meditations at noon, and then at 12.15 in Spanish, noon in English, 12.15 in Spanish, just seven minutes, okay, every day. And, and on um, Thursday, uh, this Tuesday, we have a meeting, at 6.30, and then on Thursday at 7, and then we will stay after that to uh, make our decision, okay? Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity you gave us to be together and embrace your love and grace uh, and give this to the people around us. Give us the opportunity to be the salt that this earth needs. Uh, we know, Lord, that uh, there, there is a lot of pain there, a lot of, a lot of uh, need. Sometimes people don't see the need that they have of you, but they need you. Uh, give us the opportunity, Lord, to be the salt of this earth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and everybody says. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Take care.